Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about leave them unread. Mm. Well, you know, we come across a lot of things about breakups online, and we have a lot of things brought up in our sessions. Mm -hmm. And recently I came across somebody who had been given advice to leave someone unread. Okay? So what they had been told was to put your red receipts on the phone just so you can open their message and leave the person on read, leave mm -hmm. your ex on read, okay? So, of course, there are plenty of people that will discuss uh, ignoring your ex and ignoring them for a certain amount of time, and we're gonna talk about these things today, okay? Mm -hmm. But this is a new one that I heard, leaving someone on read and their theory is that it will make them more interested in you. Will that make somebody more interested, right? Well, I think it could have a temporary effect on somebody being left on red, but you gotta think about ultimately what your goal is, okay? And, and there are consequences that could happen mm -hmm. from this. But let's, let's talk about the ignoring your ex. People say to ignore your ex. Um, and it comes in different forms. What do you think about some, if you want to get back with somebody, what do you think about the strategy of ignore them and it'll make them more interested? I agree that it could have a temporary effect, mm -hmm. but ultimately somebody who's healthy will not be attracted to you stonewalling them and you ghosting them essentially, especially if it's on purpose. There's a manipulative element to this of I'm doing this on purpose to provoke you and to get a reaction from you. Mm -hmm. And there's a risk. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, some people will say that you should ignore your ex for 30 days. And no matter what they do, no matter what they say, no matter what happens, you ignore it. I think that's ridiculous. Mm -mm. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Okay? There's so many situations where that even wouldn't work practically when you're thinking about people who share leases together, people who co-parent. To say one 30-day rule across the board to me is ridiculous, especially given how complex relationships are. Yeah. And relationships end for a wide variety of reasons. There might be some accountability that needs to be taken on both sides. Yeah, and absolutely. So, you know, if, if an ex is reaching out to try to amend things, to try to talk about the relationship, or to try to gain some understanding, to ignore that seems pretty cruel in my eyes. And immature, mm -hmm. right? It's a very immature thing to do. Like, mm -hmm. even if they're saying, even if they say something meaningful or significant, and I really miss you, can we please talk? Ignore it for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Okay. I think it's one thing to set a boundary. If your ex is breadcrumbing you, if they're messaging you after months, you know, with nothing really significant, mm -hmm. and, you know, you can tell that they are just talking to you just to gain some type of validation or something right. like that. Then you can say, hey, listen, these messages are affecting me, you know, for my own mental health. I'm going to have to uh, create some distance here. But that's completely different from intentionally ignoring somebody and intentionally putting your red receipts on. And we'll go back to that because I think it's important um, because, you know, we often talk about the indirect direct approach, which what, what happens many times is after your ex hasn't reached out or you haven't had contact for months, they will look for an excuse to contact you. Okay. That oftentimes they're anxious about reaching out. They're scared you're going to reject them, believe it or not. I know it doesn't feel like it could be, but they're often afraid that you hate them. I've been hearing that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. You must hate me, right? Mm -hmm. So they're afraid to say, hey, how are you doing? They use the excuse. How many times? I get messages all the time on Instagram. They asked about the cat <laughs> all the time. I get mm -hmm. emails. You wouldn't believe it. They ask about the cat. And even in the comments section, for some reason, people always ask, how's the cat? I miss the cat. Really odd. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's, it became such a pattern that it became a joke. Yeah. Right. So some people will tell you, ignore your ex, even with an indirect, direct approach. I don't agree with that either. Mm -hmm. If somebody hasn't reached out to me in three or four months and I don't know what's going on with them and they're looking for an excuse to contact me. I'm going to see what they want, mm -hmm. okay? Because that, that's not breadcrumbing, right? Right? You, they're, they haven't had any contact with you mm -hmm. for an extended amount of time, and now they're looking for an excuse. They're dipping their toe in the pool, mm -hmm. right? right? What's going to happen? So I don't think you should ignore somebody. I agree. 
I agree. And ultimately, these are all bids for connection. And what that basically is, is somebody making a small attempt to make a small bond with you despite all of the emotional chaos that's happening. Mm -hmm. And so you can see this happening when whenever there's any type of conflict. So I like to say it's like a room being on fire and it's that little exit sign for you to be able to get out of that conflict and go back to a place where conversation is safe again. And so by them reaching out, whether it be an indirect direct, sometimes we find that exes send a little joke. It'll be like a meme or maybe a cute little picture, something like that. Those are all small little bids of, right. hey, let's make this light. Hey, I wanna connect with you again. Hey, I want to uh, not focus on all of this emotional chaos at this right moment. Yeah. Now. So what we're saying is, if somebody sends you an indirect direct and you haven't heard from them for months, we don't think you should ignore that mm -hmm. either. You just send a message back and you don't want to look eager, you don't want to look desperate, mm -hmm. saying, oh, you know, you respond to that and then you just say, how are you doing? And see how it goes from there. Mm -hmm. Some people will say that you should ignore your ex unless there's something meaningful. Now, we were talking about breadcrumbing. Mm -hmm. If somebody is breadcrumbing you for an extended uh, period of time and they keep reaching out to you and they don't want to see you, they don't want to talk about things and it just keeps you stuck, mm -hmm. then at some point you have to set a boundary. Right. If you're getting you up texts at 3 a.m. Yeah. six, seven months later without any real changes that you're seeing in them either, you have to assess for yourself if that's something that you want to invest in and how that's affecting you emotionally. Absolutely. But that's completely different, as you mentioned, from somebody soon after the breakup, you know, wanting to have a conversation with you. Absolutely. Very different. Recently, I did an email coaching with somebody who was following the people that do the rules. Mm. I don't know a lot about the rules, but from what I heard in this email, I was not thrilled with them. Mm. Um, but one of the things that, that she was told to do was ignore any message that wasn't asking her out, which I think is just crazy. Yeah. Because nobody's gonna just message you and say, hi, do you wanna go out on Thursday? Right. They're gonna say, how you doing? How's your week look this week? Mm -hmm. I'm free on Thursday, can you get together? Right. But what she was told, it sounds like, ignore every message unless there's a message to go out. So, that's yeah. just bizarre to me. And why would somebody ask you out if their messages are getting ignored? And then she was told, answer one word answers like good and be unresponsive. Okay. And so, I mean, that just doesn't seem like it's going to facilitate into something healthy, mm -hmm. which is ultimately what we want. Right. Right. We want this to lead to something meaningful mm -hmm. again. And that's why we try and have you guys act like adults. And a lot of these behaviors, I think, are just immature. Yeah. And right. so much can be misinterpreted through text. So take everything that you hear online really with a grain of salt. Yeah. So then you come to uh, leaving somebody unread deliberately. Mm. Okay. Sure. When that happens, it's going to make them a bit anxious and a bit stressed out. And they're probably going to feel some emotional turmoil and some pain there. Mm -hmm. But is that what you want? Like... If you get a little bit of that, that might last, what, a couple days? Right. But then what? Mm -hmm. Is it, It's not going to lead to anything meaningful. How are you going to repair things? They could get angry. Mm -hmm. They could say, you know, screw you. Like maybe you have been a neglectful partner to them and they were having doubts that you were going to change or grow up. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing that. They're going to be like, it's more of the same. Right. And it's also instilling in them a fear that this will happen again. What if in our relationship, then he's not responsive? What if I do make myself even more vulnerable and then he's not responsive? So you want to be consistent. Yeah. And that's part of showing them the changes that you're making, not just in this area of your life, but in all areas of your life. Absolutely. We want you to act like an adult, okay? These are some questions that I have for you to think about, okay? If you leave them unread, if you ignore them, right? If you... Um, ignore them for 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think they're going to feel, right? How do you think they're going to feel when that happens? They're probably going to go through a lot of different emotions. None of them are really going to be good right. or positive. They're probably going to wind up feeling hurt or angry, mm -hmm. manipulated, right. um, fed up. But ultimately, how is that going to make you guys get to a good place, mm -hmm. right? Okay. How do you think you're going to come across 
if you've just ignored somebody or deliberately left them unread. What do you think? I think a lot of people take away meaning from somebody not responding. I mean, if you think about even us, you know, I, when somebody doesn't respond, I often think, oh my gosh, did I do something? Mm -hmm. So you start getting those feelings of insecurity and it's not so much a, about the relationship or getting back, but it's more about, did I do something to get this person upset? So that really detracts from what you want them to process. Now they're more worried about if you're responding from this message rather than thinking, okay, let's go back and, and look at this relationship and really think about what happened. Yeah. Because your goal is to repair the connection mm -hmm. and a big part of that is understanding our bids to connect and receiving them, not ignoring them or turning them away or making them feel hurt when, when somebody makes a bid to connect mm -hmm. with you. And I would completely understand as to why this approach is attractive because in a sense, you regain your power or you feel like you do and you're also causing your ex to feel probably a lot of ways that you feel now if, the, if your ex is not responsive mm -hmm. to you. And so don't get caught up into this power trip of tit for tat, they're not responding to me so now I'm not gonna respond to them or they ignored me for one week so I'm gonna ignore them for one week. That's not productive. Ultimately, it doesn't make you look like, wow, I've lost out on a catch. Right. It makes you it make people feel like, well, you know, if that's the way they're going to be, then why would I really want them as a partner mm -hmm. anyway? If you're looking for something meaningful, exactly. you know, it shows immaturity. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to remind you guys that if you act immature in the breakup, it's just going to leave that impression of being immature. Mm -hmm. And adults are able to clearly communicate what they want and need. They're able to show respect to others. And they're also able to give others space, even if they are a little bit anxious about it. Absolutely. And it's not easy to do, but mm -hmm. that's why we tell you have got to do the work on those attachment issues. Right. Okay. Ultimately, if you want to get your ex back, you have to facilitate a healthy connection. Mm -hmm. Right. This kind of immaturity about ignoring somebody isn't going to lead to rebuilding something strong or getting somebody back that you love. Right. Right? Because isn't that what you ultimately want is to be back with somebody you love? We certainly don't want you chasing people or looking eager after a breakup by any means. Mm -hmm. And we don't want people to breadcrumb you if that starts to happen. But oftentimes people haven't heard from their exes in months when they look for an excuse and do an indirect direct approach. Exactly. Now, we don't think you should be eager in replying to that or jump to it mm -hmm. and act like nothing happened. Right. But I think that ignoring them or leaving them on red is ultimately going to make things get worse. Mm -hmm. And think about it. If it wouldn't work in your relationship, it's not going to work during the breakup. You wouldn't leave your partner on red intentionally. I hope you wouldn't. And so you don't want to leave your ex on red either. You want to act mature. Go off of what they say. If they give you the indication that they want to have a conversation, have a conversation. Just be responsive and you want to show them that you can be that way even in a relationship. Yeah. Now you want to be careful about showing too much interest level, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, leaving somebody on red or ignoring them is only going to likely turn them off ultimately and make them question things even more. Right. Right. Okay. So hopefully you found this helpful. Let us know what you think. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Victoria is available for Skype coaching. I'm here to talk whenever you need. Just click on Victoria on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.